uh, how about NXT TakeOver Dallas? We do some of the matches from that, I guess, if we want to extend. Uh, sure, sure. Like NXT, what's it called? NXT Dallas? NXT TakeOver Dallas, yeah, that's the big special on the W. Don't you love how they call it the award winning WWE Network now? <laughs> Why not? I, I, I didn't I wasn't aware that the WWE Network had actually won any awards. So they just talked off their asses. Oh that's well, well, obviously we can call that. Okay, so the matches we got. Oh sweet. Austin Aries versus Barrett Corbin. That'll be a good match. When is this? So, anyway. Saturday uh Friday. Next Friday. Oh, okay. Okay. So Austin Aries versus Barrett Corbin. Corbin. Austin Aries. Austin Aries, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go with Austin Aries, because it's Austin Aries. The Revival, your your boys, Scott. My boys. Yeah, Scott Dawson. Are you a fan of them too? I'm a fan of them. They remind me of Arn and Tully or Arn and Oli, like the Minnesota Wrecking Crew and the Brain Busters. Because that's but what they look like. Once they come to the main roster, that's gonna mean shit. Yeah, they're not gonna do well on the main roster because look what happened to Tyler Breeze. Unless you're a Triple H guy, like Kevin Owens and. Oh, we forgot one match for WrestleMania: AJ Styles, Chris Jericho. They haven't even announced. What are they, they haven't even done it? Announced anything like that? So we can't do it till it's official, then, right? Yeah. Order in the pre-show. Uh, Imagine if that happens. Put that match in the pre-show. Oh, fuck. Because like, yeah, like so far, at least, it's pretty much set. If they put that on the pre-show, then everything you said that Vince is gonna do to Styles is gonna happen. Well, That's like either they, they're either gonna be in a battle royal. I wouldn't be surprised. So AJ Styles. You know what pisses me off more? Because it's a four-hour show, and yet they have two shows on the pre-show, which they have enough time for, which you know they're going to put so much fucking filler on that show. Like, they have to have the Hall of Famers come out way after the audience. I like that shit, but like last year they had, like what, a 25-minute filler with Rock, Ronda Rusev, Triple H, and Stephanie doing nothing. By the way, uh, with the Hall of Fame inductions, uh, what year was Mr. Fuji inducted? I can't remember. It's been so long. When he came out, he was in a wheelchair, right? Yeah, because he's old. He, because I was watching some clips of Mr. Fuji on WWE Network, and when he was doing the whole thing about managing demolition and wearing the suit and tie, I couldn't help but not laugh at that. Is was that is it just me, or was that whole point of him wearing the whole was it supposed to look like villain or something? Yeah, he's supposed to, he looked like Odd Job from the James Bond movie. Oh. Was that not a little bit kind of racist, or was that? Well, like, this is the '80s, man. Everything was racist. No, just I just found that maybe it was just me. I just found the whole thing kind of racist. I just yeah, like I said, it's AIDS. They get they got away with a lot of shit. Okay, because what wasn't like that? Referring and it was kayfabe too. I thought it was homaging Kato from the Green Hornet kind of by wearing a get up like that because that was kind of a racist. Well, if he was Kato, he would have wore a mask. Okay. No, I'm just saying. Am I the Wait, one? does Kato wear a mask or is it? No, but didn't he yeah. wear a tux kind of like that? Too? Yeah, but you need a mask too. No, but wasn't that? Kind but of, like Mr. Fuji had the bowl hat that Oddjob had. Oh, I, I've never. I'll have to see the. I'm not familiar with the Bond movies, so maybe I should shame myself for saying that. You haven't seen any James Bond movie? Never been a fan of Bond, but oh, it's always the first time. It's but, like your cup of tea then. No, but the the whole the whole thing with the suit is that a good point or is that just me that noticed that? It's a good point, but goddamn, I just noticed something here. Okay, this just, match is going to be a fucking classic. For the NXT Tag Team Champion, the Revival, Dawson and Wilder versus American Alpha. That's their name? Jordan and Gable? I'm going to say American Alpha. Oh my god, dude, I'm that gonna... match is going to be a classic, man. You sound like you're salivating it, though. Dude, it's the... These guys versus... I know, it's going to be awesome, but you It's know... Jordan and Gable. Yeah, I know. But do you remind me so much of Charlie Haas and Shelton Yeah, Bateman. that's why you should watch NXT every week, like I've been telling you. Yeah, I know, i got to get... i got to start doing that. Hey, I finally got the all in NXT special. I'm just letting you know, NXT is on every week. They don't do just bi quarterly specials. I know they're on every week, but I I gotta get back to my grind of watching wrestling every week. Nakamura and Sami Zayn too, but, man. Hold on, we'll get to that, but like I gotta get back to my, my grind of watching wrestling every week. Okay. Because like, yeah, it's like shit nowadays, because like the main show does this shit and that. It's not like how, back in the day I used to watch it all the time, but now it's gone downhill. Yeah, you lost. And it's three hour raw. Who has time for that shit? Damn. It's actually two hours and fifteen minutes if you minus commercials. Really? Oh, okay. But still, that's gonna be a classic match: a revival versus American Alpha. I'm gonna go with the revival. Okay. Yay. 
We got next Apollo Cruisers, Elias Samson. I have no idea what Elias Samson is. Dude, a drifter type gimmick. Comes out with the guitar. Um, doesn't sing like the real Double J's gay Zach gimmick was. Uh, okay. It's, it's a cool, you, like I said, you'd have to watch experience it by watching NXT to know what it's actually like. But yeah, I do. Paul Cruz. Paul Cruz, I want to say he kind of reminds me of Bobby Lashley, but you might get hot at me for saying that. So, well, he does look like Bobby Lashley. But more talented, I guess, right? Well, Lashley is talented. He just can't talk. He just sounds like a little girl. <laughs> well, he doesn't sound like a little girl anymore. He actually sounds like a dude. I just remember that joke from Between the Ropes back yeah. in the day. Oh my god, guys, go back in time, watch a Bobby, when Bobby Lashley first debuted it, he could, he, he, the way he spoke, he sounded like a little girl, was like, I still remember when he, he talked to Fit Finley, he was like, hey Fit Finley, you are a bastard, and I'm gonna kick your ass, I was laughing so hard. Remember how pissed off we all were when he won the ECW title, or, or had we stopped caring by that point? We stopped caring when Vince McMahon won it, even before then. I think, but I yeah, think, no one gave a shit when Vince McMahon won it. Cause, I think when RVD and Sabu got pulled over for smoking pot is when we stopped caring, right? Even before that. Because, like, yeah, it wasn't the same ECW to begin with. And from what you told me, that actually they have the original title. in. Uh, yeah, because they own everything from the ECW. So they demanded that Rhino ship it back, basically, right? Or, or Rhino didn't actually... I don't know if Rhino actually always had it, but, like... Probably in like a warehouse somewhere. Yeah, because yeah, they say on TV he has it. Like that's just for saying. Like he doesn't actually have it at his house, or if he does, he did, and he had to bring it back because like WWE bought yeah. the damn thing. So yeah, who's your pick, Elias Samson or Apollo Cruz? I'm gonna go with Apollo Cruz. Okay. Next is Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura. That's going to be another class. How many Nakamura matches have you seen in your total life? A few. What would you say is his best match? I can't remember because they're all against people I can't remember their name because they're Japanese names. Are you familiar with Okada? Okada? He's the current IWGP champion, the Rainmaker? No, I'm not. He's the guy that played the... You know what's funny? He's a legend in New Japan now. Remember when Samoa Joe had that uh, uh, sidekick in TNA? When they had the Green Hornet movie come out for a few months. Oh, what was his name? That's the same guy. Oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah, he, and he went on to. Well, he went on to do good things. He's now like, uh, to to throw out a proverbial saying, he's a wrestling god in Japan. So. Yeah, because in Japan, actually means something when you're a wrestling god. Yeah, I gotta say, like I watched. Uh, Owen Hart versus Ultimate Dragon, that match you sent me on YouTube. That was good. I just love uh, just the atmosphere. And he had his high voltage gear going on. One little, high energy. High energy. That was actually Owen's idea for the high energy gimmick. Because that's because if you think of how the person Owen Hart really was, and he you know, was a goof. Th does that really surprise you that he. No. The, the, the fat Albert black man, big rapper type pants that he. No, that's with. Owen Hart to the T. So. Yeah, and, you know, obviously, uh, high energy wasn't a team that was going to win the tag team titles. Exactly. But, even though they exactly. did challenge for it on numerous occasions, but Maverick was just a classic. team. I'm going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura. Have you ever heard his theme, his uh, New Japan theme? It's pretty kick ass. Oh. Nakamura's theme. No. I YouTube. It, it's, it's pretty. Yeah, YouTube that stuff. Um. So next we got the NXT Women's Champion. Oh my God, <sighs> Bailey versus Asuka. I'm not really seriously got to start watching this. Asu are, are you familiar with her outside of WWE? I've seen some of her matches. I, see her, I saw her match last time on NXT when she took on, who was it? Emma. Emma, yeah. That yeah was she's got one. the stiffest kicks I've ever seen. Uh, so good, definitely. Very definitely. Hey, uh, at least Emma's not doing this anymore. She's actually taking seriously. I'm just curious, though, so like Asuka, the WWE name for her, um, none of these Japanese talent can really talk, so I just hope they don't get lost in the shuffle once they come to the main roster. That's my fear for like Nakamura yes. and Asuka and you but eventually some dude. Hideo or Tommy can't even speak the great, he's kind of broken. He has broken English, but he can go. Or are, are they going to have to have a faction led by Funaki speaking for all of them or something? If they bring back Funaki. Cause he, or you're going to hear Funaki speak Japanese. 
Can you speak Japanese? I just don't want to see Nakamura have come up with an English translator going indeed into the microphone. I don't think that's going to happen. That will kill him. It so will. I don't think that will happen, no. Just like, uh, I'm just thinking, uh, it, it, totally unrelated, but uh, Ultimate Warrior, not, and you're the, wait, what the hell, how do you compare Nakamura to the Ultimate Warrior? You know, remember when the oh, Warrior no. did that program with Lawler? Comes out wearing the hat. That's what killed the promo, man. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If they use something like, no, because like Ultimate Warrior, he was so scared of getting hit over the head that he put on a hat, and that just took away from the whole thing, because everybody knew something was gonna go over his head. Like, yeah. who the fuck goes to the ring with a hat? Especially when it, it's totally out of place with the character. <laughs> yeah, because like, yeah, Jerry Lawler's in the ring holding a picture, and then Ultimate Warrior comes out wearing a hat. It's like, hey, I'm putting two and two together. But you know, the, the thing is, the, the NXT style is more similar to like the New Japan style. And Ring of Honor style. Yeah. I just hope Nakamura, like they're supposed to learn the WWE style, I just hope they can transition to it okay. Like, maybe, the, like, maybe that's good they have NXT because they take guys that have worked the indies for years and then get them acclimated to the WWE style. Like, AJ Styles, like, it, it's great that he went to the main roster right away. But you would think maybe they should have put him in NXT for six months to get him more... Because that's usually how it goes when they bring people in, like, like get used to the WWE style, because that's how it always went. Yeah, and that's why, uh, like, I think the Bullet Club, when they finally come in... And do you find it funny that Doc Gallows is, like, such a feared villain? And this is the same fucking guy that used to be slow, fast, fastest... Biscuits and gravy in the WWE, yeah, I don't get that, and you're man. just salivating to finally see him come to the WWE. I'm not it. salivating because I know who he is. Because like other people just can't wait for him to come back. I'm that like, one guy. You I do watched. guys know this guy was Festus once upon a time. Like go back and watch WrestleMania 24. They have a backstage segment with him and uh, Snoop Dogg and Maria, and he's like standing there, like, like uh, yeah, like. Is that how the WWE thinks our short-term memory is that we forget stuff? Oh, they I'm do not... that all the time, man. Yeah, I just answered my own question. They do it all the time because, like, Vince think, it's like, yeah, because Vince is in a different world. Like when Rob Van Dam was talking in an interview, saying like about ECW, like, like they, Rob Van Dam asked him like, so what about the fans from ECW? Like, no, the last fans of ECW were at the ECW One Night Stand. There's no more of those guys. Like, what the hell? I highly doubt Hat Guy ever attended any... No, he didn't. He attended the real one. The Maybe hardcore you should enlighten the universe to who well, Hat Guy yeah, is. Hold on, Zach. I will. Hard, uh, Hat Guy actually attended the real ECW event, which was run by Shane Douglas, Hardcore Homecoming back in the day. Oh, he didn't go to the one night stand. Hell no! Hat Guy would never go to the one... Well, he did show up on one ECW show on Sci-Fi. Which was weird because I saw him in the front row, uh, and he never was back there since because he know what because it's hat guy. He knew what. I bet you anything he was like, "What the fuck am I doing here?" Probably went on a, like a bed or a dare for friends or something. Yeah, probably on a dare because it was weird watching hat guy on a WWE TV. All right, for those of you who don't know who hat guy is, back in their okay field trip, youngins, back in the original ECW, not the shit that WWE produced on Sci-Fi. I'm talking about the real ECW on TNN. Back in the day, when they were in a bingo hall, and everything smelled like ass. Yeah, that's good. And you know what's funny? The Fed is actually distinguishing the difference between the two now. That's that good, though. That's good. In, in like, every match, I don't know how the fuck the guy afforded every match, to, uh, went to every match. But originally, it was in Philly, dude. He was, it's not in Philly. Well, not, like, there were different shows in different places. Originally, it was in Philly all the time. But then they kept going to different cities. After a while, maybe he's wealthy and retired. Who knows? Probably. Yeah, <laughs> like that guy from WWE who wears a red hat, blue shirt, and white shirt. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, back to that guy. But the, they, he was always in the front row of every show with two other guys. It was like sign guy, hat guy, and some other dude I can't remember. Surfer guy. Surfer guy. Probably. I have no. Surfer problem. guy. He was phased out eventually because then it was just hat guy and sign guy. They got their names, they got his hat guy, always wore a straw hat. Sign guy always brought a sign. And they were in the front row of every show. And came to the point where the fans became fans of them. I just would have loved to, to ask Hat Guy what his thoughts would have been on the zombie. 
I don't know. But yeah, they became fans of the fans, and they respected these guys so much that they saved their seats all the time, and they were in the exact same spot. Hat guy would cheer and do a bunch of shit all the time, and would make the crowd lively and shit. Yeah, like you could go back to like even the early days of Eastern Championship Wrestling. Yeah. It's like he ages with the product. Exactly. It's, it's, he looks the same all the time too. No, but he gets a little bit yeah. more relevant. And then the Sign Guy was phased out, who knows what happened to him, and then it was just Hat Guy. And yeah, same spot all the time. And when like Hart when ECW died and all that shit, they did a documentary, like TNA, Jerry Borash did a documentary about Forever Hardcore. And they were talking about ECW, and there was one point in the video where, like, Kid Cash was like, Oh, I so miss Hat Guy. That's how important this guy was, because even the wrestlers were talking about Hat Guy. It's like Hat Guy would be on the show all the time and just bullshit with you all the you time. You know, the, 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 the ECW faithful of the original would go out and party with the audience. Like, they yeah. have, like, uh, st- uh, what's that thing they do with all the football games? Stakes. Like, pre parties. Pre, I don't uh, have no idea. My, my, your brain's not working. My brain's not working. <laughs> but yeah, like forever hard. No, but it was they'd go out into the to the parking lot and they'd have a few beers with the fans. It was oh, like, like uh, outside parties, like the parking lot parties. No, there's a word for it. I just got to think of it. But yeah, they they were very interactive with the fans. So yeah, um, obviously they got to know the guy over the years, basically. Exactly. But yeah, Forever Hardcore did that thing, and then they did their own show when Vince McMahon was running ECW One Night Stand for the first time. Shane McMahon was doing his Hardcore Homecoming, hardcore homecoming show. He couldn't use the name ECW, because WWE owns the name to that. So he called it Hardcore Homecoming, and that was a real ECW show. Even though One Night Stand was good, the real one was Hardcore Homecoming. And like, Hat Guy went to that, and like, Legend of It says like when he first showed up, he didn't have his hat, and people were like yelling at him, like, what the fuck, dude? Where's your hat? And all that stuff. And like all of a sudden, he had this perfectly planned and took went under his seat. What are you looking at? Oh, nothing. I'm just... I'm just... I, thought you, I thought you were looking at the birds fucking outside. I didn't know. Because like, was... <laughs> like, yeah, I always have birds fucking on my porch all the time. Porch? No balcony. So like your, your balcony's a bird uh, brothel or something. I guess. Every time I look out there, no, but as we're talking thing. about Hat Guy, aren't we supposed to be giving? Yeah, it? no, but like Hat Guy, like he took out his hat from under the scene, and people just went nuts because he he brought it out, and he went to Hardcore Homecoming. I can't say the name. Hardcore Homecoming instead of One Night Stand. You want to know how I knew that was the real one? Because Terry Funk worked it the first time around. Yeah, because everybody from each of the ones that they couldn't get, that already contracted to work One Night Stand, were working Hardcore Homecoming. I think WWE actually offered Terry Funk a shitload of money to do One Night Stand 2005. And he said no. I'd rather do the real one for probably half a tenth of half the cost. of the pay. That's how much Terry Funk loved the business in ECW. Uh, and I think did did Foley work the EO? He worked one? both of them. No, he didn't work the first one, One Night Stand. He worked the second one, but he, he did wasn't. commentary. He was, oh yeah, okay. Just, okay. All right, he did both of them. He did commentary on the first one, and he re- he made an appearance in the second one. It's actually the three of them. Search. Whatever, I'm confused now. TNA did their own version. That was bullshit. Well, the and. TNA One Night's Hardcore Justice, which sounds like a porno. Yeah. Uh, hardcore Yeah, justice. let's get back to the NXT TakeOver Dallas. Yeah. You, you pick Bailey no. versus Asuka. Hey, that Bailey fan's going to cry her ass off. Yeah. Because Asuka's going to be Asuka. I think it's Asuka. They Asuka or Asuka? Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to go with Asuka. Same. Yeah. And the main event, NXT Championship. Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe. Oh, that's a tough one. We'll have Joe win the thing because like both Balor, they already have the Balor Club T-shirts going on. It's just because uh, you know, um, but you know what's cool? They they could go two ways of this. Uh, AJ Styles can be part of the. I've heard they want to buy the Bullet Club name from New Japan, so they can even go that route too. Hopefully they get the name because that'd be awesome that the Bullet Club, but not at the same time no because like look what they did to NWO version. Of but there's a lot of Bullet Club members that they. Uh, don't have there right now. Like the Young Bucks aren't there. Uh, well, you can make new members. Um, like, why do you need the original members? Like, like, look, 
Was it just me thinking that when the NWO came in in 2002 to WWE, that Scott Norton was going to show up on WWE? Oh, for... Scott Norton, where has he been? Still wrestling in Japan. Yeah, it's Norton. not Norton of all people. I like the guy, but really, yeah. you've had Scott Norton? Why can't I speak? Scott Norton was going to be in there. I just hell. I'm sure we all had funny. Well, maybe it's a good thing we 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 didn't want the watered down version of the NWO with uh had that had every fucking member of the WCW roster on it, right? We we wanted the original that meant something, which yeah. is H H Hogan, Hall. Now, actually, I love the stories. Like, what was it? They beat up Buff Bagwell one week, and then he's a member of the next or something. Yeah, because you beat up eventually a lot of people. They joined the thing. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Samoa Joe because it's like Balor's gonna go up to the main roster anyway. It's kind of cool though that they uh, do this because it gets NXT exposure on the the big stage of WrestleMania, and you know. Without Triple H's political poll, this would not be happening. Because are you aware of how shitty the the FCW setup was? Two fans going to the shows tonight or something. What FCW? That? Yeah. Two nights. Like two fans. Just 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 big exaggerated stories, but it it wasn't the accommodate setup that the NXT has. No, no we're like yeah, this one's actually good. Well, you've seen some of the Florida. Yeah, I've seen some of them. That was uh. And you know what's funny? It's the same name of that legendary territory that Eddie Graham ran back in the day. Yeah. If you're familiar with those stories. Don't know who Eddie Graham is? Google him. Yeah, we're old. We're uh, so old. But anyways, that's all our predictions for NXT Dallas. Take it easy, guys, since I can't do this because it's over there. Bye.